disgraceful. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, two catchtrays. I have my garbage bag because I'm undecided as to whether I want to salvage my Memoria Garen Weaver or I'm just going to toss the whole thing. And I have my hammer. Maybe that will be needed because I don't know if I can pull this orchid out, resulting in the fact that I'm going to destroy it completely and not be able to salvage anything. So I hope that you stick around for a spring cleaning session of my Fragmapedia Memoria Garen Weaver if there is anything at all to salvage. How did it come to this? Well, let me tell you something. Um, there's nothing that I did to make this happen. The key being, I did nothing. That's the problem right here. I did absolutely nothing. I wasn't concerned about this orchid. I wasn't worrying about it. The only thing it ever got was a good flush of RO water every day if it wasn't raining. And I just ignored it. I honestly thought, oh, it's going to be fine because it's a, you know, it can tolerate cold temperatures. And it turns out that no, clearly not to the degree that we've been having. And yet I still did nothing. I didn't bring it inside. I didn't try to protect it. Nothing. Thing. So I'm not, you know, saying that I did anything to make this happen because I didn't. I just ignored it. And I suppose in the in the sense of doing nothing, <laughs> this happened and I should have done something. Oh my goodness. Anyway, I hope you're okay. Hope everybody is having a wonderful time. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, joining me in my walk of shame. Let's try and get her out first. <laughs> Am I laughing because I think it's funny? No, I'm laughing because I'm ashamed of myself. When things are awkward, I go into giggles. It's just a coping mechanism. Trying to hide from the reality. Oh, yo, yo. Anyway, let's see if we can get her out and see if there's anything to be salvaged. Now, of course, I'm going to try and be very, very diligent with what I consider salvageable as opposed to, Nina, look, you haven't bothered with this orchid at all. It's like an old piece of clothing. Do you just, you know, give it to charity shops or are you going to wear it? <clears throat> it's a question I kind of have to ask myself when it comes to this orchid, but we're not going to give up just yet. Maybe she'll come out. Yeah, she's giving. We're not going to give up just yet. Oh, let's keep that separate. Now, what I really have to do here is, if I'm going to salvage anything, I'm going to have to pick her apart fan by fan. And I'm not saying we're going to be here all day. The roots aren't in great shape either. I've got some. Let me make sure the camera is still on. Yes, it is. The other day I was filming and the camera switched off. I was in the middle of something, lost everything that I would did. Anyway, I can talk about it in another video when the time comes to update, but <laughs> that was awkward. I thought I was doing great, but nope. Okay. So... Revive a slow grower from utmost neglect. That's what we're going to aim for. And every time a lecker pellet falls, please excuse me, we are back to being very, very careful about what falls on the ground. I have a very inquisitive fur baby. My daughter tried to give King a little bit of spinach today, fresh spinach leaf, you know, because he likes orchid leaves that fall on the ground that I toss into the hedge. He goes and retrieves them and chews on them, but he wouldn't touch the spinach. So <laughs> I don't know, whatever that tells you about the dog. <laughs> My temperatures recently have gone down to five degrees every single night for the course of three weeks. This orchid lives on the south side, well, tucked up against not exactly a hedge. It's a fence type of thing where she gets morning sun in the winter and then finds herself in the shade 
for the rest of the day. So the day temperatures never really rose high enough for the warm pockets on my patio to actually manifest themselves. And I'm not saying that maybe that could be the reason that she's not doing well, but clearly I've got a lot of cold damage, especially on some new leaves. That is not pest, that is not a fungus. I've got, of course, the dead old leaves here. That's normal from old fans, not fussed about those. What I'm bothered about are, you know, marks like this on proper good leaves. And that's me not paying attention, honestly not wanting to pay attention. It's like my fires when we had that one storm. I just didn't want to turn the corner because I knew what I was going to see. Talk about trying to escape the reality of things. Oh, this is also looking already. Like, huh. Keep going. So I'm going to just tease the lecker out bit by bit. I'll be back when I'm pretty much done so that we can have a look and see what we're going to separate out and I'll change the camera angle for that. Ick. So I thought I would bring you in because as I'm fiddling, you can see I'm already losing quite a few fans. This is the first one. Here would come the next one. It's already, it's a goner. So I thought I'd bring you in right now. Otherwise, there'll be too much explaining to do. At least this way you can see how bit by bit I'm getting into the orchid and fans are done for. I also have some viable roots, but I'm destroying them because I need to get the leka right out. We'll see what, you see that? That is never, ever a good sign. The yellowing of leaves at the base, if it's not an old fan, like this is a very old leaf from an old fan, that's fine. But this leaf right here, this is never a good thing. The leaf was actually all right. It started to rot out. Now, if you're thinking, yeah, well, semi-hydro and slipper orchids, you're right. It could be an issue, but this is neglect. This is an issue of neglect. So doing nothing with semi-hydro and slipper orchids is not the way to go. And I have another collection of orchids that are slippers and they're all indoors, always. And they're doing fine in semi-hydro. So I'm not going to diss the media. I'm not dissing the setup. I'm dissing myself. Because even though some orchids love and thrive and enjoy neglect and do much better on the neglect, you can see that in some instances, there's also a balance. Too much neglect. <laughs> And you get this, especially if you feel that, you know, this orchid should come inside just to be on the safe side and etc. and don't bother like I did. I didn't bother. It did cross my mind every once in a while. Hello. But I'm like, okay, nope. Not happening. But anyway, here we are. So if I'm going to cut fans off to see what's going on, even though I've pretty much got Lekka out, I'm going to have to get my secateurs because this is a network of roots on roots on roots on roots. There's no Lekka there, so we'll get the secateurs and do a little bit of a chop chop. Let's see what we're up against Ugh, in here. Now, as much as slipper orchids like to be repotted, again, there is a limit. And I maxed that limit out. It should never, ever come to this. Old rhizome in here. Because I've had this orchid since 2018, but what I've never done is separated her. I just let her grow, potted her up, cleaned her up. From another year, another year of neglect where I had her by the hedge and neglected to, oh dear, this is terrible, but I neglected to flush her enough 
and an ant colony got itself really nice and comfortable in there and yeah when it went to repotting i had to first of all evict ants and then you know i've done my due diligence with pouring a nice jug of ro water through her every single day and then i've done this so in the last two years since i did evict the ants she was doing well last year because I was diligent about it. And then enter the winter. And I just thought, yeah, flushing is enough, except when it rains. Never ever thought it's going to be this bad. I knew I was risking something, but I didn't think I was risking it this bad. <laughs> yeah. So you can see here are the newer leaves. And they clearly have an issue at the base. And we're just going to see what we can salvage. This may all be a pointless exercise. I may just toss the entire orchid, but we'll give it a go. I did bring my trash bag and my hammer for a reason. Otherwise, I would have just said, look, guys, I messed up. I ignored her, neglected her. She's a goner. And that would have been a five-minute video. But here we are. Let's see what we can do. Now, even though the roots are dead, I do want to kind of leave some roots on for anchoring if I were to choose to pot this piece up. I haven't made up my mind yet, but I'm not going to go all harakiri gung-ho on the root system just in case this sad little looking piece here is actually something I may want to pot up. I know. Patético, hey? Yeah. Let's go into the next piece. Oh, Old fan, fine. Newer fan, not fine at all. We've got rot at the base. Okay. So that eliminates that one. Sorry for the jiggle. Moving on swiftly, old fan right here. How is this at the base? Uh, it looks to be okay, but it's not going to survive all by its lonesome. Uh, we'll move around the other side before we make a decision. Let's see what we've got here. Old fan. Right there. Oh, gosh. Sorry about the constant jiggling. And the background noise. I apologize. But projects like these, you have to get into them. And then it's like you can't just stop. So I do apologize. Right. This is the piece we're still keeping an eye on. I need to get myself some new secateurs. Very old rhizome. Hmm. I'm looking at this side here. You know what? I'm just going to get rid of it. I'll make sure that I don't hurt the carpal tunnel issue by chopping through a bit of lecker. So let's get that out first. You know what the funny thing is about slipper orchids when you disturb them and repot them, etc. The stress itself triggers blooming. <laughs> Can you imagine if this blooms for us later in the season? I highly doubt it, but yeah, that would be kind of hilarious because that's what happened the first time I ever addressed the orchid to repot and clean her prior to having the channel. Promptly she bloomed for me on the year that I launched my channel. So <laughs> imagine that. Anyway. See, this is a newer fan with a leaf right there. <sighs> talk about, talk about stepping up to the plate. <laughs> oh. 
This is also a newer fan, even though it doesn't look like it. We've got a nice new leaf in there. It's a goner. Something going on in here. This is a new fan right here. Of course, very vulnerable now, all by its lonesome there. This may have been a new fan. It's a goner. And this is a new fan right here. Oh boy. Because it has a nice new leaf growing in there. You can see that. Hmm. So what I'm going to do is just clean up around the base and keep this clump as one. And we'll clean her up properly from the dead leaves, cut away whatever is brown, and then pot her up again with the other piece. Because if I go in too much now, I'm going to make new fans vulnerable, like this one right here. This is a nice fan. It doesn't have that much damage on it, not sustained too much. I'd like to keep that. I'd like to keep that. So some of the nasty will stay in this clump, but at least we have some support system for the fans that may, may just revive. And yes, then this orchid is going to be coming inside because I'm not having it in semi-hydro as I did last time. It's going to go into a self-watering pot. One that it was not allocated for, to be honest, because when I did my shopping list, this one was not on my radar. <laughs> I told you, I did nothing, nothing to make this happen. But the fact that I did nothing made this happen. So, yuck. And we're just going to deal with some of the roots in there. Just what we can see that is scraggly and scruffy. And again, I'm not cutting all of the roots off that are dead. I'm just going to leave some for anchoring. And just do a little bit of a visual tidy. I'm surprised that I'm going to be keeping some. In my mind, I was like going, Nina, you didn't bother. So why bother? But we're going to do this. I have some viable roots. I busted the Valamen, pulling out the Leka, but there's a cluster of something viable in there. So we'll work with that, see what happens. Okay, my self-watering pot has been prepped. Two microfibers, because they love their water. And we're going to submerge everything into water itself. Because in this way, the leka being small leka, fine roots, small leka will nicely disperse in and amongst the fine roots that are there, even though they are fine dead roots. Let's see if I've made the right choice of pot. Because I only went with an 18 centimeter pot, seeing as we have a long way to go with this orchid. I'm going to put her into a smaller pot and then see how she evolves if she needs an up pot maybe in a year's time, maybe sooner, who knows? So this is 18 centimeters. I could put her into a 20 centimeter pot just to make my life a little bit easier. And I have one, but that pot is also allocated for another orchid. So we're gonna go with 18, because when it's go time with the other orchid, I really want that pot and the size is harder than the 18. So I've taken her, placed her into the middle See, we tuck things away and I've got her a little bit lower in the pot just because I want to make sure I can pull her up 
at the end. Let's get some Lekka in there. Sorry about the view. Sorry about the jiggle. <laughs> Sorry about the atrocity that you see before you. And if you're still here, hey, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Now, I'm not going to ask for likes on this video because what is there to like? But maybe for, let's just say, full transparency, this video deserves a like. And if you feel so inclined to acknowledge that full transparency in the orchid hobby is a good thing, then I would appreciate a like. Thank you so, so much. And if you're here for the first time, welcome. Yes, I have neglected this orchid badly to the utmost, uh, yes, a shameful degree. And um, probably other orchids in my collection have been neglected as well. But this one, in my opinion, is the worst of the worst. So consider subscribing because not all my orchids look like this. I have other issues going on in my collection that can all be documented and explained, <laughs> probably rationally, without having any kind of, let's say, repercussions to the fact I've neglected my orchids. This one, if this is your first video, welcome. Yes, this has happened. But it would be lovely if you would subscribe too, because it's not all like this. My channel is just all about transparency and my mistakes, my shame. This is not a mistake, this is just pure ignorance on my part has led us to be dealing with an orchid that, yeah, I was about to toss. But you know what? I struggle with tossing orchids, even at the best of times. We'll see. Maybe she is a candidate for recycling, but until then, we'll give it a go. And we'll try and do better. How about that? Let's drain the pot. She is very, very low in the pot. Now, Fragmapediums, any slipper orchids, yes, they like to be a little bit lower, just about their base, because that is sort of, you know, root growth territory. And while I like my frags to be lower, well, all my slipper orchids to be lower, because as they grow their roots, they lift themselves out of the pot. Eh, this is just a smidge too low. But I think we're there or thereabouts. You see, I'm thinking positively, because I'm thinking ahead, if she recovers, continues to grow more roots, then she's gonna lift herself out of the pot. Now that's, you know, that qualifies as something, no? Thinking positive, thinking that I'm gonna change my ways for this orchid. You may see that I've still left some really brown leaves at the end, but I'm kind of protecting the stability of this little fan, which is a new one. I know, shocker, huh? So I've not gone all gung-ho with cutting out leaves because I'm giving them Sorry about that. I'm still protecting the, let's say, integrity of possibly a new fan. That's the plan anyway. We have some roots exposed to the surface here, which can always happen. So let's get them covered up. Just loosely, not too much around the base. There we go. And into the mask she goes. I found the tag. It had, had somewhat been gobbled up in that other pot, but I've got the tag. And we're just going to fill the reservoir with plain RO water. And then she's going to go inside, make sure that there's enough. Because the roots are not all the way down, seeing as we cut a little bit of the length off. And if there are any viable roots that are long enough, I would like them to be touching water seeing as they've been used to a lot of water, because yes, I have actually been doing my due diligence, even though it doesn't look like it. The last three weeks I stopped doing my due diligence, but I stopped doing my due diligence indoors as well, because it was just so darn cold. Anyway, <laughs> there, let me get you down a little bit further. Let's assess the height of the Lekka compared to the base. If we can do that without going too mad with the jiggling, there we go. Ooh -hoo. At least that's working. Getting back in the groove. So we're a little bit low there. That's fine. Everything is looking okay base-wise. I know, I know, okay in adverted commas, but for the baseline of the fans and hopefully new roots to grow, 
this is the height that I like to have the slipper orchids at. And now I can say we wait. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let me know what you think of this. I would like to ask if any of you have neglected orchids that you're not so hip about or too keen about even uh, looking at. But you know what? Don't expose yourself. I'm being transparent on my channel. But if you have similar situations where you're like, yeah, no. And then afterwards you're like, oh my goodness. Let me know in the comments anyway. If you've made it to this part of the video, thank you so very, very much. I appreciate your time. I wish you a fabulous day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.